with an update on an injured star's return and more this is wrestling hub my name is john and you're watching the wrestling report before we get into the rest of the video make sure you subscribe to wrestling hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling also don't forget to follow us on instagram at wrestling hub official and follow us on twitter at wrestling underscore hub Speaking to comicbook.com, AEW TBS champion Jade Cargill talked about challenging for the women's title. I'm just going to give these ladies some time before I want to go for the big belt. That's something that I want to accomplish. I want to go for the main belt? I know that for sure. I wouldn't say so soon because right now, I'm just focused on getting reps and getting better, having longer matches, better feuds, and actual storylines. However, I believe it's time for me to start having storylines with a Britt Baker or Jamie Hayter or a Soraya or Tony Storm and working those storylines. I know I can do it. I have the charisma to do it. If you stand me next to any of these ladies, the work, the look, and the aura of who I am speaks for itself. Asked about WWE typically making foreigners heels, Intercontinental Champion Gunter told the Rob Brown Show, Times have changed. I totally get the concept of like, the bad foreigner comes in and wants to get the title. If I ever get to wrestle Cody Rhodes again, I think the roles there are clear. I am that bad guy from somewhere else, and I want to beat the very popular American guy up, and I think that's totally fine. But like you said, just because somebody is from somewhere doesn't mean they should be portrayed a certain way. Recalling his time in WWE, Terrence and Terrell Hughes revealed a funny Vince McMahon storytelling insight with Chris Van Vliet. They noticed every little thing too. One of the guys from Retribution dropped his phone, and I don't know why he brought his phone, but he dropped his phone, and the producers and Vince and them were yelling at him. If there was a crowd and there's a lot of people, I feel like they would have missed it, but they noticed every little thing. Touching on now being an AEW, Terrence said, I think with AEW, Tony's a little bit different. He would come up to us and actually give feedback. The match and stuff like that and then the agents will usually come and watch for wwe vince doesn't come up to you so it's a little different Talking about finding her voice in WWE as a ring announcer, Alicia Taylor told Real Radio Monsters, It just never felt right to me. And then Triple H came over to me one day at rehearsal and he goes, Hey, aren't you a metal singer? And I said, Yeah. He says, Then give me your metal voice. And I said, Okay, well, if I've got Triple H's approval, then I'll do it. Speaking about Roman Reigns' current run in WWE, Paul Heyman told Variety that, I will honestly state that I'll put Roman Reigns and his portrayal of the Tribal Chief up against anybody right now and how he has approached a reality-based character of the top star of the industry. And the fact that he's not recognized by the people that are there to reward such performances with an award to me is disconcerting. Heyman then broke down the character of Roman saying, These people that worshipped him that he ruled over, that gave him anything and everything, that wanted to sacrifice for him, put such a pressure and burden. And that's the word that we always use for the tribal chief is the burden. The burden of the responsibility. The burden of the obligation to fulfill the destiny and the vision for and the obligation and the responsibilities and the accountabilities of the tribal chief. He resented them so much for placing that burden on him. On the Sick Podcast, Sami Zayn brought up possibly bringing back his old WWE theme song for his match against Roman Reigns in his hometown of Montreal, saying, I mean, if it were going to come back, I feel like that would be the time and place to do it. I've said this in other interviews, I feel like it would kind of be taking a step backward. I think maybe a new song is in the cards, but I feel like that song, even though people have a real fondness for it, it seems. From a character's perspective, it just feels like taking a step backward. At the same time, doing it for like a one-night thing in Montreal, might be cool. I don't know.
with JBL parting ways with Baron Corbin on Raw. Dave Meltzer noted this about the angle on Wrestling Observer Radio. They gave up on it. Obviously, this wasn't the plan. The guy in charge, that's Paul Levesque, felt it wasn't working and that was it. Where they go with Corbin, I don't know. It felt very much like a burial for Corbin. He's had so many gimmick changes. There's nothing wrong or right with him, but in the pantheon of stars, he's just not at that top star level. I think they wanted him to be at that level and they gave him every chance to be at that level. He's just a guy, a tall guy, but he's just a guy. When asked if he still tunes into WWE today, The Undertaker told Sportsnet's Tim and Friends podcast, yeah, I still watch the product. And you know, obviously, it's kind of a no-brainer. I'm watching what Bray does. The Bloodline story is just phenomenal. And you know, obviously, with the Elimination Chamber being in Montreal, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Sami Zayn and the job that he's done in that story. But that Bloodline and Sami Zayn story is so compelling. It's so well done. It's what we do. That's what we do at our best. We storytell. I think that whole thing has been done i mean just from the layers of how it started and bring the usos into it and the uncertainty there and the bringing everything together where it's just a well-oiled machine till you can see the wheels loosening up and about to come off and then with the thing with sammy it's really been well done so obviously i watched those guys again i'm always interested in what bray wyatt's doing Mentioning the surge of Cody Rhodes in WWE, Eric Bischoff gave his reason behind this on Keeping It 100. I'm going to put my conspiracy right on here because I've been in the room and heard certain conversations throughout my entire career. Enough of them to lead me to believe there's always a little something else behind the scenes. But how sweet if look, I'm gonna talk about if it was me, alright? If I was running WWE and this AEW thing comes along and there's this, you know, little fight going back and forth. But now, if I'm me and I see Cody get there and go and make me go oh man i wish i would have listened a little more here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring him back and i'm gonna make him the biggest star ever in about seven minutes so that everybody in AEW is going damn i should have jumped first Former WWE stars Naomi and Mercedes Money are set to appear together as it was announced on social media. Welcome to ECCC. Trinity Fatu, Naomi, Trinity and her bestie Mercedes Varnado are tag teaming Seattle March 4th and 5th, meeting this duo at the brand new Seattle Convention Center Summit building. With it previously announced that he had parted ways with New Japan Pro Wrestling, Kota Ibushi said this to Dark Pure Arrest Flosion about a run in WWE. Of course, I'm interested in it. I'm good at producing players and I've created stars, so I don't think there's anyone who can control me even in that frame. I live so freely. Pro Wrestling Bootmaker Jose G. Sands recently made a post on Instagram, which seems to indicate Randy Orton is preparing for a WWE comeback as he wrote, I haven't made them yet, but Randy Orton contacted me via email for his return. Currently, Drew McIntyre and Bray Wyatt are some of the biggest superstars. Today I received an order for boots for Cody for Mania. With him taking to Twitter in December to announce that he may have had his last match, Oni Lorcan was mentioned by Matt Bloom when he talked about his team for NXT, confirming the news to real radio monsters. My position now was a head coach. I oversee my coaches. I have an amazing staff, so I gotta give props to those guys. Terry Taylor, Fit Finley, Robbie Brookside, Norman Smiley, Steve Carino, Alexander Winkler, Oni Lorcan, Chris Garrard, who just recently retired from being in the ring, Johnny Moss, and we have a few UK coaches that are on the cusp of being full-time coaches as well. On a film set for comedy Ricky Stenicki, John Cena can be seen wearing a skirt and heels. When it comes to a description of the film, it's noted that Ricky Stenicki is a fictional character used by a group of married friends to blame their misbehavior when making excuses to their wives. When the wives become suspicious of never meeting this person, the husbands then find someone to play the fictional character.
Pat McAfee noted how he is being sued by Brett Favre for defamation due to comments about the former quarterback's involvement in an embezzlement case. Where in Favre's lawsuit, McAfee is quoted as saying, Every time his name gets brought up, we have to mention that he tied the hands of the poor people and took money right out of their pockets. Favre is certainly in the middle of stealing from poor people in Mississippi right now. Addressing the suit, McAfee said on his show, I'm getting sued by Brett Favre. Yep, we made it, boys. I'm getting sued alongside Shannon Sharp and an auditor in Mississippi by Brett Favre. Favre is suing me in a a defamation lawsuit saying I defamed his name to try to earn a profit. With this, I believe, comes discovery and depositions and all of these other things. So I would like to let the New York lawyers who wrote me two letters before this thing got announced, McAfee stated before noting what they said in a letter, which was them wanting him to remove any and all mention of far from the archives of his radio show, Twitter, and YouTube library. He called it a warning shot. So I looked at that and said, that's hilarious. Of course, we're not doing that. Put that down. Move on with my life. I would like to let everyone know know the quotes that were in that lawsuit were certainly accurate, but there's one word that I believe that was said often on this program, which was allegedly. Our job is to report the news. At the time, it was allegedly going on down in Mississippi with Brett Favre, the man suing me for money. We had to cover that situation, and we certainly said allegedly, and a lot of people were wondering how my lawyers were going to handle this. You know, I ain't got him, so let's ride this effort. I'm excited. I'll see you in court, pal. In a video, Rey Mysterio can be seen at an airport where he is approached by some for autographs. Here's the clip. They don't let us do shit like this anymore, so I'm signing for you guys to make money. Can we appreciate it? Rey, I've been a fan since I was a little kid, man. Let the fans come up and ask for an autograph. Well, I actually am a fan. Back in the 80s, dude. That's why I'll sign one. I'm a huge fan, man. I signed one for you. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.